Hello guys, welcome to the Princeton Picker. I always get a lot of questions about collecting old Pepsi bottles and the era of them and how can I tell uh, different things about them. So I wanted to put together this quick overview of some of the eras of Pepsi bottles, what to look for, what they were doing at the time, and some of the oddballs you'll find along the way. So your very early bottles, I'm talking turn of the century up to like 1920s, so the late 20s. These Pepsi bottles had different towns on them. They were non-standardized. They had different script markings and so forth. These are your very early script or what do you call straight side bottles. They would have had a typically a diamond shaped paper label here in the middle. Um, you'll find them from different cities. You'll also find brown ones or what we call amber Pepsi bottles. This one you can see is from Newburn. It would have also had a, a label on it as well. There's a whole category and collecting world just for the script Pepsis. So let's take a look. Once they got out of this and Pepsi got standardized, there was a couple of bankruptcies involved. Once all that happened, they the paper label came out. There's actually an, an earlier version of this paper label with just um, like corner uh, designs have it a little larger font in the middle. This one has got some damage on the bottom. It's from Durham Burlington. On the paper label bottles, you can also notice they have a textured neck and they're typically, you'll see the seams in the bottle that typically they're not exactly lined up when they tape them and, and um, put their label on. If you can see this, these labels were glued on the left and right side. That's typically where the glue marks were at on these guys. And the center of the label, if it's got any damage, is usually what comes off right in this area. So there's a lot of people that print their own labels for these and glue the whole back of it and stick it up there. But if you want to find an original, look for the glue marks in there. And it needs to look like it's also an 80 to 90 year old bottle. During the paper label phase, Pepsi also did a lot of cross promotions. This is an Evervest neck promotion for their sparkling water. That was a Pepsi Cola product as well. And you can see the, the label uh, adhesive on the back and how that is presented. So a lot of the, not all, but some of the paper label bottles you'll find look like this. And everybody's like, this is just a common bottle. And it, it is fairly common to find one with no paper on it. However, some of the these guys, if you notice on the bottom, have towns in Boston. This one's from Goldsboro, North Carolina. So I always pick these up when I find them just because of the local implications for collectors. And it's just fun finding different variations of them. This is one you don't see as often. This is a paper label bottle that got repainted. Um... And I'll show you the difference once you get into the, the double dot red, white, and blue era versus the uh, single dots. But this guy still has the textured neck. And if you notice on these all of these paper label bottles, the bottom would be smooth all the way around it versus its next predecessor, which is the red, white, and blue painted. This guy... They wanted to have the paint on one side of the bottle completely so the seam would line up perfectly. They have little little knocks or, on the back of the bottle. So when the bottle went down the assembly line for paint, it would be spun properly, and then it would be painted along the seam of the bottle. Uh, one thing you'll also notice, if you put these side by side with the bottoms flush, the neck embossing, the shoulder embossing of Pepsi Cola on a paper label bottle is significantly lower than a standard red, white, and blue painted bottle. That's always good to notice. The red, white, and blues came out around 1946. Um, a quick way to date these guys, you can see it says registered U.S. Patent Office here on the bottom. Some of them have just an R with a little circle. And then the mid, the early to mid 50s, Pepsi went, dropped the double dot for the single dot. And that's your one dot between Pepsi and Cola versus the double dot that has two dots between it. So earlier bottle, newer bottle, if you consider 1950s a newer bottle. This is, a, these came out, all these came out in eight, 10 and 12 ounces, some uh, odd variations and sizes in different markets. 
So that's always good to know. Some of the other oddball ones in the late 40s, Pepsi took their double dot bottle. You can see this was past 46 because of, or 47 because of the R. They changed their neck labeling to indicate you get two full glasses with this 12 ounce bottle. This was really important in their branding of their beverage and also how they competed with Coca-Cola. Because Coca-Cola always came in six ounce bottles. And Pepsi, you would get two full glasses, 12 ounces for the same price. Some of the markets had a lighter blue, which we'll see here with these guys. This lighter blue bottle, uh, I don't know if the paint was different up there. They had different standards, but it's always fun to collect variations. And you'll see this as you go through different um, bottles and different areas. A lot of these were northern bottles. I have seen them from New York, from Maine, uh, New Hampshire, other areas like that. This is an odd duck in the, in the collecting world. This is a red, white, and blue, which is typically found in your double dot bottle. But this is a red, white, and blue single dot. This came out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. There's a couple bottling plants that did this bottle. Um, not really sure why they did it, um, but it's always just another different variation to collect. Jumping back one era closer to the paper label bottles. This is kind of going backwards. This is a fountain syrup. Fountain syrup bottles are relatively hard to find. They came out so you can mix your own fountain service at home if you wanted to. They had glasses that had Pepsi Cola on the shoulder of them and there was a line at the bottom of the glass. And that's where you would pour this fountain syrup to and then you would add your water to it. And here's the directions of how to mix this Pepsi. You pour one, one and a half ounce of this syrup into a 10 ounce glass, add chopped ice, fill glass with carbonated water, stir with long spoon and serve. So this was a very short lived product for Pepsi, the fountain syrup bottle, fountain syrup bottle. But there again, most bottlers had these and they're always typically early to mid 40s. The 1943 is a common year that I can remember seeing. Um, one of my favorite bottles, and it really trips up a lot of collectors, is this guy. This is a 1946 piece of glass, a bottle. However, it has a 1950s logo and lettering on it. That is odd in itself because you can just do a quick comparison to a typical red, white, and blue. And you'll see that neck embossing is way lower on the single dot than a 1940s red, white, and blue. Which this bottle should be from the 50s, and it probably was used in the 50s. It's just that a lot of these plants, they reuse bottles, wash bottles, repainted bottles. And you can also see if I can get it just right to the left of this top logo in this area, the seam travels the bottle this way. It goes right down through the label. And I don't know if you guys are going to make this out or not, but it's a 1946 bottle, which is very interesting. But if you guys got any more questions about Pepsi's, I'll try to help you answer them. Uh, I've done it for a while. I'll try to get up the early script bottling video soon. But... It's a fun hobby to have. It's something you can always enjoy and do with other guys and attend bottle shows. But if you guys have any other questions, like I said, leave me a comment below. Always like, share, and subscribe our videos, and have a great day. Thanks.